today I'm back with the vintage off-road wrecker. I've done a few things since the last time you've seen it, but there's still a lot more to do. Both the front and rear axles have been upgraded with lunchbox lockers. So I do have some lockouts to put in the front to keep the wear and tear on the front axle down, as well as being able to steer when I'm in four wheel drive. If I want to, I can unlock one side. Back here on the boom, there were no lights on that boom, but the brackets were there, so I've installed a small set of Hellas. I don't have them wired in yet, but once these things are working, I think they're going to be a great addition to the wrecker. Inside the wrecker, I have installed an accessory port. On this, we can plug in a car charger or a USB port, a cigarette outlet, whatever we want to plug into there. Over here, I have installed an inverter, so I have 120 volt power as well as some USBs. And I've even hid a cigarette outlet down here as well. So now no matter what kind of device I want to run, I can power it from here. I've also sorted out the kill switches. I have a separate switch for the winch, as well as one that turns everything in the truck off. I have the wiring for the boom lights roughed in but the wires are just exposed right now. And honestly, this wiring looks terrible, but I like to run everything, get it run where I approximately want it, make sure that everything works. And then I'm going to take my split loom and put all the wiring in there, clean it all up, get everything tied up nicely, and we'll see what the difference is. Quickly, so the lights are up here on the back of the boom. So where did I put the switch to turn those on? I mounted the switch here underneath the seat. It is red when the lights are not on. It's green when the lights are on. And these are activated also by the kill switch for the winch over there. So if the winch is turned on, then we'll see light here. I don't have to worry that there's a light on all the time because I plan to have the winch kill switch turned off most of the time. So if I turn the switch on, you can see the boom lights are on, turn them off, on. I think that's going to work really well. I have the wiring tucked up as good as I can where it is out of harm's way. With just a little bit of work, you can take your wiring job from looking like a rat's nest to a professional job. And the entire goal of this build is to create as reliable of a wrecker as possible. The lights are off, let's give it a little test. Yeah, I think that'll work. A week or two ago, I put lunchbox lockers in the front and rear axles. Got the new lunchbox lockers that are going to be going in the axles. This pin that goes through it engages and locks up the differential. I also have axle rebuild kits. These are original army surplus, says here July 11, 1952. And the other one is also July 11, 1952. So in case I need some new parts, I have those thanks to the army making a bunch of this stuff and not ever needing it. And so to retain my ability to turn when I'm engaged in four wheel drive, I'm going to install a set of hub lockouts. These are from M-Series Rebuild, and these things are beefy. Even if I swap the engine in this truck for a really big one, it is not going to break these. These are the full diameter of the hub, unlike other ones that you can get for these trucks. These are built in the USA, and these are fully serviceable. The way that these work, you can see the visible holes in this, which are going to bolt on right there. Those are going to be connected to the wheel, and on the inside of this, the spline here, it connects to the axle. So this essentially connects the drive from the axle to the wheel, letting the wheel turn. But if I don't want one side engaged, or if I don't want these axles turning when I'm just driving down the road in two wheel drive, I can turn this to the free position like it is now, and the axle can spin, but it is not spinning the wheel at all. Or vice versa, when you're driving down the road and you don't have four-wheel drive engaged, it will not be spinning the axle. It will only be spinning the wheel. So as you can see, it's really important that these are very strong. And I think these are the strongest ones that you can get for this truck. 
I don't think there's any way that I'm going to be able to break these. So let's get these installed and see how they look. They've made removing this pretty easily. You just undo the nuts that hold it on and then you can use these two bolts to push this off. Now I'm going to spin these bolts out so that I can thread this nut in further. So I want to spin this nut up. So that when I put the bolt in again, it will go in further. Now when I tighten these, it should push this out and off. There we go, this is off. Now if I hold this up here, you can see how this is going to work. The spline on the axle is going to go into here. And if I put this on, so it's lined up with the axle right now, and I can spin this freely. So that means if this axle was turning, the wheels would not be getting turned by this axle, and vice versa, if the wheel is turning, this is just going to spin, and it's not going to turn that axle. So if I put this on again, you can see it spins freely. Now if I set it to the lock position, like that, now I can't turn it any longer because this is now locked to this piece. So the axle will be locked to the wheel. And so those two are going to have to turn at the same time. This gives you a big advantage going off-road because with a locked differential, you can control which wheels actually are getting power. And if you were to break something off-road, if I was to break this axle, I could just engage this to free, and then none of this is going to be getting turned, and I'm less likely to do more damage. So if I set this on here, you can see these studs don't come through here, so I'm going to have to take these studs out and replace these with longer bolts. And you'll also see that the threads on the other side of this stud are bigger than the studs on this side. So not only is this going to be very strong, but I'm replacing it with bolts that are much stronger than these original studs were as well, because they're a continuous diameter all the way out to the end of this. So I'll try to get this gasket off and get these studs removed. You've seen me use this stud remover before. You just Stick it on your stud, turn it, and it will start to lock on there. It will work in either direction, so you can use it to install studs as well if you wanted it to. But let's see if this is strong enough to get these studs out, and if it's not, I have a different type stud remover that's a lot stronger that we can try. This one's coming out no problem. The hardest part about using one of these is getting the stud back out. You either need to take some vice grips and turn it the other direction, or sometimes if you're able to drop it on the ground like this, it will come loose. So that loosened it up enough that just dropping it on the ground like that, I was able to get it out. Here are the new bolts that I'm going to be using. Put two of them through and then get my gasket on. Okay, there we go. This is gonna be a huge improvement for this vehicle. Driving this around with the lunchbox lockers in it, I really didn't notice much difference from the way it was before, but just in case, now I have the freewheeling hubs. And this will give me a lot of different options for configuring the four-wheel drive on this vehicle. This truck, like all military trucks, was 24 volt. It's now been converted to 12 volt, and if I want a horn, I needed to 
put a 12 volt horn in here. So that's what I've done. This horn looks similar to the one that was originally in here and it mounts the same. But the important thing is this one runs off a 12 volt instead of 24 volt. But in order to use the horn, I need to install a new horn switch because with the new power steering, I'm not able to use the original wiring that runs up to the steering wheel. So I bought this push button switch. This is a Lucas switch. I like this because it's high quality and it looks vintage. It will fit this truck very well. I'll install this on the dashboard, run new wiring, and then I should have a working horn. I'm thinking about putting the switch right here in this plate where the original blackout light switch was. So that will be an easy place to reach down and hit when I need to honk the horn. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to work really well right there. I'll get it wired up. The horn is hooked up now. I took a small wire that runs down to that starter solenoid there. That is the power. That way the longer wire that runs through the firewall and up to the dash is only supplying ground. This is a much more reliable way to do this. That way if anything hits the connectors on the back of the switch or that long wire gets cut somewhere, you do not have a positive feed that things can short out on. Okay, let's hit it and see if it works. <laughs> Horn button works, we're good to go. I brought the wrecker outside to make sure everything is still working. Well, everything seems to be working pretty well, but I have a whole lot more to do on this truck. So if you wanna see more videos like this, and you don't want to miss the next updates on the vintage off-road wrecker, comment below and click subscribe.